Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, I'm going to share you my neighbor's yard. We're going to do a little backyard garden tour and her little front planter. In the back of me, we have the incredible sunflowers and impatience. And I'm going to turn the camera around so I can show you guys some more detail. We bought these super petunia bubble gums from Creekside. They were in a container we removed the container and planted them in the ground. So I believe this had at least three bubblegum super petunias in one container. And she bought four of them. One, two, three, four. So when I look at her yard from my backyard, these are gorgeous. Just a big pop of color. And then in between her bubble gum, she has some wine and roses. And I was able to share these with her because I had some that I wanted to remove in my back garden. So she's got three of these that I shared with her. And we replanted them and they've done quite well this year. These wine and roses will bloom out in the spring and randomly have blooms throughout the season. I don't really see any blooms on it currently. But as I stated, my garden, I love the red that it gets on their reddish purplish color and it pairs well with this bubble gum. Super Petunia is here. It's a pretty color combination. Okay, and then we're gonna move up here. She has emerald green arborvitaes that line her fence line. These emerald arborvitaes will get about 13 feet tall by 3 feet wide. And hers has done well here. And then for a pop of color in the springtime, she has these sugar baby brisinthias. So they bloom in the spring and then just have foliage throughout the season. So she's got several of these in between her emerald green arborvitaes. And then in the corner here, she has a holly that has done quite well. And it's starting to sprinkle on me while the sun is out. It's weird. And then she has some geraniums. Love the color on that geranium. So, so pretty. And then again, the arbovates that line the fence. Okay, I had to stop just for a little bit because we got a quick rain shower. So this is where I left off. These emerald green arbovates line her fence. And then she's got a maple tree that we bought at Creekside Nursery too from Jenny. And here's the maple tree. And we wanted a pop of red, purplish color in her garden. And this brings these colors out, gives this contrast against these emerald green arborvitaes. And then she's got a couple of solar lights here with hummingbirds. We love our hummingbirds. And then swinging across, this is a fence line. She's got a couple of crepe myrtles here. She's got a set of two. This crepe myrtle. And that one right there. And this little tree had so many buds on it that she had to 
hold the limbs up because they couldn't hold all the buds but look at all these little buds on these trees it's crazy there's just so many and there's those balloons close up so these crepe myrtles give some summer interest so when I look at her garden she's got winter interest with the emerald green arborvitaes summer interest with the crepe myrtles and her annuals here's some impatience here I love that she loves red because I don't really plant a lot of red but I like to look at her garden from mine and see all this red and then she's lined this flower bed here with stone and it's just like a little kidney shape We found these rocks in the back of our subdivision and I was almost a little jealous to give her this rock because it's so pretty with the quartz. And then she's got some salvia. And let me see if I can capture this little bee on there. Can you guys see that little bee? And here's another one. Pollinators love salvia. And after the salvia blooms out, you can cut the stems, the old spent blooms back, and it'll flush out new. And that's what she's done here several times. So she's got at least two to three blooms out of this this season. And this is a perennial salvia. And it'll come back each year. Or actually, it was an annual salvia. And this annual salvia came back for us because we are a zone 7B slash 8. And then over here, back porch she's got a lovely little living space and there's Bonnie hey Bonnie <laughs> and she has introduced these palms to me she did these palms every single year and I had to have one too so I bought me a big pot just like hers and put these palms in these will not survive our winter so we will have to bring these inside these palms were just absolutely gorgeous so I mimicked off her and then we have some petunias here in euphorbia drip so this container does have drip so she doesn't have to water it each each day and I helped her put drip in to all of these flower gardens as well so she's got some real pretty blue pots Let's see if I can show you guys down here this blue pot and these bright colors just look gorgeous with it. This whole combination here. So she's got two of these flanking her back porch here, her living space. Oops. And there went our sprinkler. <laughs> surprise, surprise. the impatience on this other side with the euphorbia there and then she's got a climbing vine here with a spike this is called mandela there's climbing mandelas and there's one that just looked more like a bush form and 
This is more of the bush form here. See this little guy there? So here she has this sprinkler on a timer as well that comes on twice a day for about 15 minutes each day. Me and Bonnie share the same grass routine as my last video and I'll put that video at the end of this video so if you're interested in getting your grass looking better I had five tips to get it thick lush and green and this was the first year of this regimen and look at this grass it's very pretty I always feel like good looking grass looks good against your garden backdrops She has another little container here with some of the coffee cups. And some petunias. I love how she accents her space with these lanterns. And this is her kitty. Which one funny is this one's name? This is Axel. Hey Axel. Hey pretties. You're gonna be on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any cats. I just have a German Shepherd. I'm not sure how she would do with kitty cats. I don't think she's ever been around a cat. She's got two and they look very similar to each other. Here are the Sun Incredible sunflowers. And they get tall enough on her back porch, and this is her little fire pit area, that they flank right over top this area. And then when we pan around, I can see this really well from my garden, and I love this space. So at first when we planted these incredible flowers here, she had the super bubblegum petunias here and the cats just laid right in the middle of them. So we decided to move them in the back of me around the fence line. And this is lemon coral sedum. And actually her cats go underneath these impatience and hide and it's just so pretty. I just love this space right here lemon coral sedum and this was a whole flat of sedum a whole flat of impatience and a I think we put five it's incredible sunflowers here and they just keep blooming you can take off the deadheads or you don't have to they look make them a little tidier when you do and they'll rebranch and bloom even more but they just look so pretty show you this close up. You can see there's a spent bloom and it doesn't look bad at all so you don't really have to. This is just beautiful. Picturesque. And then over here in the corner she's got two more emerald green arbolates to help with privacy from our neighbors. You can see how close we are to each other. And then she just planted a new butterfly bush here. So it's really hot here in North Carolina right now. So this little guy's gonna struggle just a little bit the first year. So don't worry about that. And it is like a lilac bloom. Just give these enough water if you're planting them in the hot summer. And surprise, surprise, this was supposed to be a blue chiffon, but it didn't turn out to be a blue chiffon, but I think it's gorgeous with what she's got next to it here, but it's 
We'll have to figure out what type of Rose of Sharon this is, and I'll throw the name up on the screen, but there's that bloom. It's part of the hibiscus family, and these will get about 12 feet tall. It will help provide some privacy as well in the summertime. I've got a little bit of a hill here, so let me pan over here. And this is a white Rose of Sharon. And there's that bloom on this one. A little closer up here to this one. Well, actually, these two Rose of Sharons actually pair really well with each other. I was just asking Bonnie where she got this mulch at because it's more like a wood chip mulch versus this kind of mulch. And I really actually like this. It's really nice. By putting two to three inches of mulch down Every season will help suppress weeds. Can't believe how gorgeous this looks. Oh, mercy, it's very pretty. Sometimes they'll put off these little flowers here, little yellow flowers, and if you don't like those, you can just trim them back. Lemon coral seed on is an annual, but it will come back for us and it'll actually spread. She has another little planter here. Not really little, it's quite big. So she has three Prince Tut grasses in this area. And she wanted something tall to give her some privacy until these rows of Sharon's get a little bigger. This is the Prince Tuck grass. And then she has some red pentas in here. And she had some gara that's gone out of bloom. And then this chocolate drop coleus, which has done amazing. I believe we had two, two to three coleus in here and she's had to trim the heck out of these but I just love this color and it pairs really good against this maroon color with these red pentas so this is Bonnie's other cat Wags say hi Wags say hey Say hi. Say hi to everybody. Well, that's Wags. And Axel's over there. Just hanging out. Looking at the birds. And these are her lines for her drip over here. This is her timer. The same timer that I like and that I recommend. put in these flagstone pathways and the grass has grown in really well on these pathways here. Going along the side of her house. Now we're in the front and these are the same holly bushes that they put in, the builder put in here. And then she added a few landscape, landscape roses here that are also red. These hollies do need some attention, and I do think there's some kind of caterpillar tent worm in there, so I need to let her know about that and treat that. You can treat that with BT. Spray it. You see another one over there. You see that? So, during these 
garden tours always look for some kind of disease too that will hurt your plant. I feel like these hollies also get a lot of black spots so I have to treat, treat that with some kind of fungicide. And she has another little lantern on her front porch with some rocking chairs. So I feel like that's important too to give that some decoration that gives it some accent as well. You can change out pillows. She could put some wreaths up there. That would add some different look to her too. And see me in the light over there. In the window. And then she's got a fern. Fern's quite happy. And then she's got another lantern. And then I helped her with this aqua pot. And it is everything that she has planted in here is loving everything. So this is the aqua pot that's self-watering. So you just fill it up with water. It's got a water reservoir in the bottom. You fill it up once a week. Just have to monitor it in this 100 degree heat that we have. There's a creeping Jenny. This is the accent plant that I planted. And I can't believe that it's gotten as big as it has. Some coleus. And I'll find that name out and put it up on the screen. And coleus do set off some blooms and pollinators love these blooms as well. Let's see this bee. Quite happy here. And she had some sun impatience somewhere. Really must have gotten covered up by this coleus. I don't see that anymore. And then she has some petunias over here with a spike. These are starting to get a little laggy so they could use some type of little trim there. They'll flush out more with blooms. So she did have some Rockapella pink impatience. Well, I can't see them right now. Yeah, this coleus has covered them up and they must not have got any sun. And then she's lined her flower beds with this edging here. It's another landscape rose. Let's get these blooms look up close. So she took out some of the builders landscaping and put these roses in here so she's got four in this space and two over there in the back. I've never planted this shrub so I can't really tell you what that is but I'll try to find the name of it. I like the different type of foliage that these leaves have on there too. It makes them stand out and be pretty against this hollies back here. And then she's got a little bit of hardscape here too. Pretty little girl curtsying a little bench. So that's my tour today. I hope this was helpful. Got some gnats all around me here because it's hot and I'm sweaty. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my neighbor's yard. 
I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you some gardening ideas and some landscape ideas. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. So these are my neighbor's dogs. <laughs> Everybody loves animals here. <laughs> so you met my neighbor's cats and these are the dogs. Bailey. Ah, oh, Mercy, this one's getting me. Mercy, what you doing? What you doing? This is Sophie. Her dad's fussing at her. Come here, Sophie. She's nipping at me. Sophie, and this is Bailey. Bailey's a couple years older than Sophie. This is their new addition.